Okay, so welcome. So that this is the this is about the nature of coordinates, and so for a showing. Okay, at, le at least I will speak about this three-dimensional stuff, <laughs> which is just here. That's great. That's awesome. Wow, some yeah. Is this the inner bound or the outer? <laughs> inner. This is all. I, I did not did not bother making. This is the inner bound, not the outer bound. Okay, you know you know that what is what's that? Okay. Okay, so that here are the okay, actually what happens here that we have a thing this this uh, this uh, uh, 15 coordinates whatever you see here it determines one point in the 15 dimensional space. So if I'm just looking for all possible this uh, distributions for which the Ingleton value namely the, the coordinate number 1 is non positive then we will just span out uh, a 15 dimensional <laughs> cone whatsoever and this is exactly what I am interested in so that's what I want to just make a mental or at least some, some not so mental but some a more handable picture of how this 15 dimensional stuff looks like so that all the coordinates whatever is here okay some reduction what comes here so that here are the 15 coordinates whatever you see here so that I have a distribution on four variables and from four, four variables I'm just computing 15 numbers and also I'm assuming that the very first number whatever is up there it is non-negative no sorry non-positive all the rest is non-negative numbers because I am interested in those cases when the Eagleton the very first Eagleton is violated so that's on this protrusion whatever comes in this in this in this stuff so that this it should be the number one it should be uh, <coughs> negative or at least non-positive and all the rest is automatically positive values but there are 15 of them which is too much okay we have to do something uh, making it a little bit simpler so the first thing what I just showed you that go away please private information simply go away they do not count anything so that what actually happens that this 15 dimensional cone is nothing else but this 11 dimensional cone whatever you see here so that all the values determined multiplied by this four dimensional orthant okay so that this plus stuff so that this is uh, whatever values they are here and they are just keep fixed so for any distribution whatever you are getting 11 values they are just here and then after that this uh, last four values you, you, you can replace it by any value any non-negative value whatsoever and you are still getting uh, entrop almost entropic distribution and almost entropic values so that therefore the last four values simply don't line so that you can just uh, set them to zero so that's, that's the first step okay so that for any distribution I'm just replacing the four values by zero. I'm just I'm getting uh, an almost entropic point. Next thing, I'm using Ferro's trick. Uh, this thing, okay. So that this is a fantastic uh, method. So that who you can uh, create uh, an almost entropic distribution from an another one. And this is one thing. So that I'm taking the C and I'm just uh, making down this three by t and in this case if I'm just using this uh, this reduction then what actually happens is that this value the coordinate number 10 it will decrease by t and coordinate number 2 it will increase by t and everything else will just stay the same thing surprise surprise so that if you are just doing this thing that only only change whatever happens that this coordinates change uh, decreases this coordinates increases by the amount whatever it whatever I'm just putting here for t and I can do it until this wall coordinate becomes zero so that I can transfer the weight from this coordinate to up there and also I can just do the same thing from this coordinate I can also transfer things from here as well so rather than using c I'm just using d then then the things going here so that okay fine so that this will be zero and I'm just getting some modified values here one well, okay we are getting better right okay next thing okay here that's the I told that okay I, I won't uh, may correct the warp over slice but this t it should be u or this u should be t as well so that is the same number using a different type of uh, the, the other type of reduction we can just move uh, weights from this coordinate to another coordinate here so that once again using this transformation 
This coordinate can be just decreased, and the expense is that another coordinate up there, it will be increased. And once again, so that the value from this coordinate can be transformed here as well. Okay, so that once again, I'm just making it down. And so therefore, the second thing, wow. Okay, so that this is what we are getting. So you see, we are just getting from the 15 coordinates, we are just not getting nine. Okay, that's, that's much, much better, right? And also, okay, that's the, here are some uh, price what we are, we are just paying. So that first, the, the private information, that's simply just, you can just forget about the private information. It doesn't matter. However, these two coordinates, whenever I'm just decreasing them, then I'm actually increasing some other coordinates here, and it is not clear that I can do the reverse operation. And very probably I cannot, so that it is not, it's not a thing that these two coordinates can be assumed to be zero. But what, what actually happens that if I'm just going quite far away, then they will, be, they, they will become zero. So that that's, there's something, an eventuality, so that, okay, that this is something when, when, I, when actually would happen. So that this is not, the, not whenever things are just getting ugly, but, but at the end, they, they, can be, they can be sent to zero. Okay, and what the next thing is, that we are just making the symmetrization. So at least, at least if there are, if nine is still too much to handle, but if you are just making the symmetric part so that whatever they are writing, they are in a single line, they're single line, single line, so that simply that they are, okay, the A, B, C, D, if you are just making the Ingleton is invariant for swapping A, B, and sweeping C, D, and also uh, each line are just invariant for the sweeping, so that we are just making this symmetrization so that rather than using nine coordinates, I'm just using these four lines. So the first thing it would buy, I would just call minus alpha over four. Okay, so that whatever the second, the, the sum of these things, it would be called beta. The sum of these two things, it would be gamma half. And the sum of these four things, it would be called delta. And why these fours and, and uh, twos are there? Because, surprise, surprise, the alpha plus beta goes gamma plus delta is exactly the total entropy of the four variables. Okay, so that if I'm just using, choosing this four over four and over two, then whatever these four coordinates remains, they're sum up uh, simply just the total entropy of, of the whole distribution. Okay, so what I got? Wow, I'm, my God, four numbers, four real numbers, they are add up to one. And whenever they add up to one, then I knew that, okay, at least I can have a three-dimensional object. Right, and there is it. Where is it? Somewhere it should be just around. Is it here? Okay. Okay, so that, yep, okay, so you see. So this is the uh, three dimensional object, whatever you see here. So that this is the alpha, is somewhere at the very top here. So that is not, not, not a regular triangle, regular tetrahedron, but something that I just pulled up so that it would be not so flat. And so that this is the alpha, beta, gamma, delta, so that alpha, beta, gamma weights are just put on different things and whatever I'm just getting. And okay, so here are the, here are this surface, whatever you see here, that is the surface. And this is what we are just got from just searching for our millions of distributions, trying to get, get our S as high as possible so that we, I know, we know that this thing, whatever those thing is, this is a convex part of this tetrahedron. This is because the wall entropy region is a convex and the convexity is preserved by all the transformation, whatever we did. So therefore, this is a convex stuff. So that it goes up for a certain way and also we know that the base, a alpha, beta, gamma base, it is entropic so that this is on it. And also we know that the, the top the very top, it is not entropic, so that it will be just out. So it, it should be some very nice, anyway, any convex, convex surface is an easy and, and nice surface. Simply just get it. How does it look like? So that what actually we did, um, made millions of millions of distributions, tried to make it as close to the surface as possible, and then, and then, and then whenever we got distributions, up to then after that, we simply just took the uh, convex hull of everything, whatever has been generated. And this is what you see, it is this is gray, gray stuff. And this is what has been printed out in three dimensions. Yeah. So that is three dimensional printout of the whole thing. Whatever we got as an image of, of this 
for random variable image of the <laughs> of, well, this is gamma gamma four star at least part of those things, not everything, but something which can be just uh, visualized in three dimensions. Okay, so that's whatever we got from things, and also we have some bounds. Okay, that's we know that all of those entropy inequalities, they are just get, giving us some kind of a bound that whole, this whole surface would, would be. And this is the other one, whatever you see here. These are the bounds, whatever have been got for collecting all available uh, uh, entropy inequalities. So that's what we know. Uh, the zhang yang inequality is somewhere cutting the whole thing a little bit above the whole top of the whole thing, so that it is, it, is, it is even not playing any role here. Okay, that's, that's a little bit above then, then well, no, not too much, but only just slightly above, whatever is it. And uh, so therefore, uh, so okay, that's even even uh, inequalities which which did not appear anywhere. So that uh, uh, in in Randall's work there were several rules for that. If we have an entropy inequality and we are applying this rule, then we are getting new entropy inequalities. So I just applied all of those rules for getting more and more inequalities. Uh, try to generate new ones and everything, so that lots of lots of inequalities have been generated, which are just true entropy inequalities. And putting everything, what you see here is is only just that that outer part. So this is much much smaller than much much bigger than whatever we can just get. Right? And during the search uh, for uh, for this uh, this. Uh, uh, Inner approximation, what, what we have got is we have got something a, a little better a violation of the Ingleton score. So that is what you see here. That is, the, that is this point here. That is the best thing. The next black point here, which is you see here, that is the uh, point which is generated from the ringing bell distribution adjusted the probabilities so that it would get the highest one. So that they are, okay, they're almost the same line, so that's only all the increase is only just very tightly, but the distance between the two things is quite far, so that it means that there's a lot of, lot of things which can happen, and it is not clear that where the top uh, of, of, this, of this convex hill it would be. It, it could, okay, so that, so these are two things, almost flat, okay, but very, very tiny, tiny flat stuff. And also it is the convex hull of things, and it also means that, that we only have certain points. And that's why if you're just looking at the, uh, the actual printout, then you will see it's quite bumpy. And this is because, because of the, uh, the convex hull, so that we do not know any, 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 anything more about. Quite an interesting thing that you see that here, Okay, the, the two sides of this thing is, is touching the, the, the this is, these are the Ingleton sides. This one, the gamma delta and the delta beta, which is just the, which is the things that they are actually touching the Shannon. So that's a lot of, lot of distributions which are just satisfying the Ingleton stuff. There are no, no distributions on this side. On, uh, on this beta gamma side, which was a touch, these things. At least I could not find any of the distributions. However, none of the, in, uh, okay, that's, it uh, does not say that, okay, all of those inequalities, whatever I have, they do not exclude that we would just have uh, uh, distributions also in this side, so that they, 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 the whole curve, the whole hill, it could simply just touching the, uh, this side of the tri uh, of the tetrahedron, but okay, that's that is a big question. But there it is really, really uh, it goes in an angle, or or it's simply just touching, and later it turns out that says no one knows. Also, I have a movie. Okay, at least. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay, here it is. So that you you, you could just watch the movie. This is this is simply just turning around the same thing. Okay, the same points, whatever you see here, wow. Okay, just turn, 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 and just watch. It is exactly, it should be exactly the same thing. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, the very first movie, I guess, the very last one as well. <laughs> 
Okay, and I've got a lot of uh, emails from, uh, from the Google saying that, okay, no, I, I'm just enter the movie maker so that I have to just promote and a lot of things. <laughs> okay, so that's it. Okay, the whole thing, okay, that's uh, this picture, simply just the, the, I know that there's a lot of software available which are just making this rendering and things like that, but everything what you see here, my son, some just wrote the rendering software, so I just created the three-dimensional, uh, uh, the points that where they are, how far, and my son simply just wrote a simple program and where the lamps are, and so that simply just made the rendering. Okay, well, this is the final, final result. Okay, so, okay, and also here you, are, you see also just a couple of shots of the, from the movie. And also, you can see the real printout of it. Hopefully, I just gave you something. Any improvement, any new points, anything about the more things. So that I was very much fascinated by this, by this thing, namely that at least here is some easy three-dimensional body, and no one ever seen it before. So that we are uh, okay. I'm, I was the very first one who has any idea that how exactly it looks like, so I can just touch it. Look at it. So that, so this, so this was this was something very fascinating, and so I tried to just make as much as possible. But, but finally, uh, so I had a feeling that it it should look like quite similar to the to the printout, whatever you see there, but it might be a little bit different. So that it is not clear that using a very distribution with lots of lot with huge support, that it seems to be, it seems that. Large support distributions, they, do, they are doing something very much different things what these small support distributions do. And it is not clear that, that how to optimize this distribution, how to get things. Uh, very probably you cannot get too far away from, from this surface with those distributions, but they might give you an absolute different uh, picture. So uh, this is a convex stuff as well, and whenever I would just I, I just gather generated a point which were, which happened to be in, in the convex hall, and so the, this was distribution. I tried to adjust the probabilities, and I was expecting the distribution simply go on the surface, but rather than the, the distribution simply went inside and went this way, so that. Generating, so I know that there are distributions along this line, but I was un absolutely unable to get any distribution along this line. So everything, whatever I tried, is going backwards into the in, in, into the inner of, of this whole thing, and it is not clear that how to get something on on the surface. And, 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 and by the way, we know exactly that there are things. Other uh, other interesting fact, which uh, which I still think that would be just a good good. Okay, what happens? I'm just hitting and if nothing works. Okay. Okay. So that this is the best thing that on score. Okay, you see here. So that uh, using those things so that you remember that a lot of lot of this a lot of manipulation of the distribution values. So these are using the Pharaoh's techniques. Uh, throwing away the private information and moving, moving the whites from one coordinate to other one. And it, the only thing what we know that if we have an almost entropic coordinate point, then this transformation also gives an almost entropic point. But actually getting a real distribution with those values is a different question. And in this case, this, uh, this is Ingleton score, which is better than the than the Ingleton score, which is generated from the ringing bus distribution. And we know that there's such a distribution exists with this score, which is better. But actually, no such a distribution has been found yet. You have to just come up with a distribution <laughs> which has a better score than, than the improved version of the, uh, the ringing bus distribution. And OK, here is it. But, but still, still, this is something which is a missing stuff. Okay, we know the existence, but we do not know the, the actual instance of that stuff. Yep, that's right, still. Okay, and the last thing, which I'm just going to tell you, there's something fantastic proof of ferro, which proves that the, uh, the central region is not a polyhedral. And hopefully, this will be just quite a short and understandable account of his complicated and very involved proof. And I hope that the ferro will just understand his proof as well. 
Okay, so the, the first thing that we are just making a uh, fantastic four uh, five variable uh, in a series sequence of five variable inequalities, and we are just starting from that inequality. Hopefully, do you remember that stuff? And we have we have seen this inequality lots of times. So that this is a uh, uh, this is a five variable inequality which is it follows from the Shannon inequalities. Also, if you are, you, are, you remember, then here in this part, the z and uh, there's no z and a d, they are just, or the z and a d, they are not mixed up. Okay, so the z and the a d, they are just, they are, they are never mixed up in this part. So therefore, whenever I have any distribution, then I have another distribution, and when all of those values are the same thing, however, this value, whatever you see here, is zero. Okay, so that if I have any almost entropic distribution, with these values fixed, then I have an older uh, uh, almost entropic distribution where these values are exactly the same thing, but this thing is zero. Consequently, no matter what five, uh, five variables I do have, these values must always be non-negative. Okay, that's got it. So okay, I have any distribution of five variables. Then I have another distribution on the same five variables, and those four values are the same thing, and this is zero. So therefore, originally, these four values should be non-negative as well. Yep, okay, that is the maximum entropy idea, whatever I was just telling you what happens. Okay, so that what, whenever you have five variables, then you have another distribution on the same, same five variables, and all the, all the marginals which are involved in this side are the same thing, but this thing is zero, actually. Okay, so that's, that's it. Okay, so that, therefore we have another uh, inequality which, is, which uh, also holds for five variables. Okay, and this, is, this is actually whatever we are getting, so the Zhang Yang inequality comes here, if you are setting this thing. Okay, so next thing we are just we are proving uh, uh, a sequence of inequalities which are just here. And this is, this is proved by induction on k, for k equals to zero, a Shannon inequality, okay, it's from zero, 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 then zero, 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 so therefore this is bigger than or equal to zero, this is a Shannon. Okay, when k equals to one, and then it is one, 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 and this is exactly the previous inequality. So k equals to zero and k equals to one, we have this, this, this stuff hold. Yep. Yes, yes, okay, so that is same, yes, that k equals to zero, this is shown inequality, and for k equals to one, this is the previous one. This is that one, whatever you see here. Okay, okay, so that by induction on k, so that suppose that for k we have the, we have this inequality hold, and I am just plugging in the variables a, z, b, z, c, d, d, and a, z. Okay, for A, Z for A, B, Z for B, C, Z for C, D for D, and A, Z for Z, once again. So the same thing for A and A, Z. And I'm just getting whatever you see in the bottom. That's what I'm getting. So that if it holds for any four variables, or five variables, then it must also hold whatever you see in the bottom. Yep. Okay, so that's one by one. This, double, this arrow, it, it is there because in the next slide, you will see the same inequality on the top. Okay, so that is by induction hypothesis, fine? Okay, so that here is the induction hypothesis. And also, as here, what I'm, I'm just going to show here, once again, here, this uh, A, B, and Z, A, D, and Z, they are independent, once again. So that here, once again, I, just, I can assume that this Z and A, D, they are independent, assuming this B, C. So, okay, once again, this thing, whatever you see here, this is a Shannon inequality. Okay, here, this is another, 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 so that I have these four Shannon inequalities, once again, plug in into any of the checkers, and you will see that those things hold. And also, a Z and A, T, assuming B, C, this can be assumed to zero, so therefore, whatever is subtracted, it is just there. Multiply the first thing by one, the second thing by k, the last thing by k times k plus one over two, and 
uh, add them up. Whatever you get on the left hand side is the, uh, this is the claim for k plus 1. Whatever you are, you are on the left hand side is exactly that this thing, whatever we know that this is bigger than or equal to 0. So therefore, we have proved the inequality for k plus 1. Okay? So those things, if you are adding up appropriately, then you are just getting the claim for k plus 1. That's it. Okay. By induction, OK. Right, so you are always just getting this thing, this thing equal to zero because whenever you are just proving that you can always assume that those things are independent because none of the uh, those none of those partial uh, ever mentioned in any of the proofs, so that those can be assumed to be zero. So that is what the maximal entropy idea says. So this is this is how it is proved. Okay, that's it. So that's the proof. Okay, once again going back, this is the this is the statement. Okay, please remember that stuff. That's what we have proved. Okay. The okay, what, what corollary we are using is a non-linear entropy inequality. Here is it. Okay. So that whenever the A B C D is non-negative, then this this inequality also holds. Okay, the proof is simply just, we know that this is the uh, Matush inequality, whatever we have seen before. If this I is the Ingleton, B is this one, and C is this uh, sum. So the, the inequality, whatever, whatever has been just, we have proved, is exactly that thing here. So what actually we do, we are choosing the k appropriately, so that if you are just choosing k, any, any integer, it can be any integer, but we are choosing k appropriately, we are just getting this inequality. And by assumption, this i is uh, less than or equal to 0, so that we are choosing k in a way that it will be just between these two integer values. OK, so that k. OK, this is two, two non-negative integers. i is less or equal to 0, so that in the worst case, I'm just using k to equal to be 0. But otherwise, OK, that says, as this is non-negative, this is one, one less, so that if everything fails, then I can choose k to be 0. But otherwise, I can choose k whatever I want. And so therefore, uh, this is bigger than or equal to 0. So for k, I'm just putting here, um, putting here the lower lower estimate for k because i is negative 1. OK, this i is a negative value, so that therefore uh, I just put here this stuff. And for here, as the c is a, a non-negative thing, so I am just putting the other value here. So that therefore, this is, this whatever you see here is bigger than or equal to than that value always. So therefore, this is bigger than or equal to c. You are multiplying the whole thing by c, rearranging, and you are just getting whatever it is here. Yes, yes, I do. Right. OK, so that, uh, OK, you are, I'm rearranging things, and I'm just choosing k in a way that's OK. That I, you can just do a lot of different minimization depending on exactly that what you want to, what you want to achieve. Yeah, k should be an integer value, so therefore you are just choosing two, two values. But okay, so there, there are a lot of, lot of other uh, quadratic inequalities what you can just make out of those things. So there are others which are not so ugly, but this is what I will need. OK, right away. <laughs> OK, so if k is quite large, then it doesn't matter. This one and then minus one. So therefore, it will be almost. OK, we are, wait, 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 wait. You will see the results. Okay. So anyway, so that is, that is uh, inequality, which always holds whenever we have that stuff. Pardon me? Yes, it is symmetric in B and C. Which is not? The Ingleton itself? Ingleton C, no, it is not. It's not symmetric in B and C. But this is symmetric in B. Oh, no, I, OK, that's, this, this value is not symmetric in B and C. That's right. But, but, there are, but this side is symmetric. Oh, OK, so here, here is the Ingleton as well. So that, OK, 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 OK. By the way, so that any, anyway, OK, so that. What we do, we do the following. We are taking a two-dimensional cross-section of the wall entropic region. Two-dimensional, OK, at least two-dimensional, I know what the two-dimension is. And the two-dimension is done in the following way. Uh, first of all, I'm just making a normalization. 
OK, so the, the entropies, they are going as, well, as far as y. So I have to just make some kind of a normalization. And I'm just making the normalization in a way that this value, namely whatever inequality I have here, this value would be equal exactly to. Okay? So that whenever I have any distribution, I can just multiply this distribution by any non-negative number. So I will just choose this normalization in a way that this value, whatever you see here, would be equal exactly to. Fine, I can always do that one. Okay. So that this means that the wall, wall gamma four star bar, it is cut with this hyperplane. I'm just looking only for that thing, but it doesn't make any difference. So that's, that's a normalization. Next thing, uh, whatever is left so that in this cut, everything is, uh, everything is projected into two-dimensional plane when the one coordinate is a, the minus ABCD and the other coordinate is this thing. Okay, the one coordinate is this thing, the other coordinate is that, that stuff. That is two coordinates, two vectors. And for every, every entropy point, what I'm is getting, I simply just make this projection. So then, actually, I'm just looking for any, any if I'm getting any distribution, I'm just normalizing distribution this way so that it would hold. Then after that, I'm just looking for this coordinate and this, this value and this value. And I'm just making a point. Fine? OK. So that I would just make as many points <laughs> as many distributions are there. Okay, so that's, that's what I'm just getting, a two-dimensional cut of the projection of the wall gamma, gamma four bar here. That's what I'm just doing. This is two-dimensional. Whatever this x, y point can get into in this, in this thing, this is restricted by the Matus inequality here. Namely, this value is two here. Okay, so this value is here too. That's why I choose the uh, normalization this way. This is the uh, y coordinate, and this is the x coordinate. So therefore, no matter what I'm just doing, uh, 2y must be bigger than or equal to the next squared. Okay, whatever, whatever projection I'm just starting from, after normalization, I must have y bigger than 2y bigger than or equal to the x squared. Yep. Okay. So once again, I just get any 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 distribution. I'm just normalizing the distribution this way, and then after that, I'm just projecting the point into the x y two dimensional space, and then and then I'm just looking for these points, whatever I'm just getting as as a projection. And also know that that whatever the projection is, the projection should be should satisfy this thing. So that here is the picture. This is the okay. This is the y. Uh, smaller than or equal to the x squared. So this is the red part, which is simple as just excluded. So this is those things which do not satisfy the, uh, the inequality. So this, no projection can be here after a while in the red point. And I'm just, I was just making a lot of uh, computer experiments, and I just made lots of distributions. And surprise, surprise, I got lots of real distributions, which simply just get projected into this part, whatever you see here. OK, and now we are done. OK, so that were the four-dimensional well, four entropy region polyhedral, then this projection, whatever you see here, it would be also a polyhedral. This would be a polygon. It should be a polygon, right? This point, whatever you see here, this very point here, the 0, 0, it is part of the projection. Yep? OK, so that the projection, if it's a polyhedron, well, this is a, poly, a polyhedron, then it should start either horizontally or a little bit above those things, but there is no other way. Yep? OK, so that I know that the, whatever the exclusive, this is x squared over 2. OK, so that there could be no points below x squared over 2. So therefore, the, 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 poly, uh, the polygon, which is the polygon, it should start above. OK, this should have to start with a positive slope, this polygon. OK, but, but the experiment says that I can just get as close to 0 okay, as I want. So therefore, it cannot be a polygon. OK, actually, I have examples, namely I'm just using the ringing by distribution with these, with these uh, probabilities. Okay, uh, I'm just using this S in a way that the probability should add up to two, should, well, should add up to one. OK, 
sorry. <laughs> and in this case, I'm just getting these things. Uh, you see that the normalization factor, what I'm just normalizing with, it should be, it is about uh, twice this value minus, uh, minus this value, which is, as you see, 2 plus little o e times log e. Big O, okay, that's uh, 2 plus big O, uh, this uh, epsilon times log epsilon, so that is the normalization factor. Okay, this is, this is around 2. Uh, the x coordinate is then somewhere, this is the, uh, the entropy, this is the Ingleton value divided by the normalization factor, which is just 2 somewhere, so therefore the x is, x is epsilon, uh, epsilon half. Uh, the y is once again this this one, so therefore we have uh, examples whenever this thing happens. So therefore we have an example which is this uh, uh, x squared c times x squared. So that this we have an example here, and also uh, by Matush the x squared, x squared over two is excluded. And if there is anything which separates the excluded points and the existing points, that is when when the entropy region should be, but there is no polygon which would just separate these two curves. The x squared, c times x squared, and c1 and uh, x squared over half, so there is no way to just separate these two things, so therefore it cannot be polyhedral. So here is, here is the example, so that this is the green line, if it's, it seems to be green, this is the x, uh, this is the 2.8 times x squared. This is the point which we just got from the uh, from the ringing bar distributions, that's that thing. So the, this is the example, this is the forbidden, and there is no polygon which will just separate these two curves. So therefore, the entropy region cannot be polyhedral. That's the thing. Okay, so that's, that is, that's Ferro's proof. Uh, you, uh, okay, what I can do, uh, I can just tweak with the ringing bar distribution, the probability so that it would not only a single variable, a single epsilon, but two, and the adjusting takes y12, so that I can just get here. So instead of the green curve, I can just get here a little bit over. These best probabilities, uh, this constant, it simply just gets down to 1.6. Uh, this thing, it, it is point half. Okay, so that, okay, whatever is forbidden is point half. Uh, whatever I get is point 0.1, point 0.66, and there is a gap between the two things. Either there is, we should have to have better inequalities, or we should have to have a better uh, distributions, whatever your choice. But something, that definitely things are not empty, either this way or that way, but you have to just call it. Okay, so that's fine, something, and thank you, that's it.